Hey, what's up, Street Talks? Eric from there from Street Talk Blog. So I just wanted to show you um, uh, my current workflow for Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. So just open it up, click import, and I'm currently testing the new. I'm gonna uncheck this. I'm currently testing the new Ricoh GR version three, and these are some test photos that I shot with the, the 21 millimeter. So essentially, I just click the import button and just click import and this is probably one of the best things that I've learned is whenever possible shoot JPEG because it's going to speed up your photography workflow like crazy. Uh, on the Ricoh GR3, I'm currently shooting high contrast uh, monochrome mode. And also one of the benefits of shooting JPEG is in terms of copying and importing photos, this process is going to be way, way faster. And I think that anything you could do to speed up your photography workflow is better. And if you're curious, the way that this uh, this thing organizes itself is if you think about image management under pictures, 2019, and you can see that according to the dates you're photographing, it starts to import the photographs into these folders. And I feel that this is probably the best way to keep things organized. For a while, I was using the new Lightroom uh, CC, the, the cloud version. And while it's faster and simpler, I still think there, if you're using a laptop, there's still great merit to using Lightroom Classic, uh, Adobe Lightroom Classic, which is the Lightroom we kind of know and love. And it does seem that they're doing updates. Adobe is doing updates to it. So don't worry about it being killed quite yet. And you know, you could also buy standalone versions of Lightroom. Uh, I think with Lightroom 5 or 6, I'm not exactly sure what version we're on at this point. And if you're curious, just kind of uh, basic impressions about the Ricoh GR3, it's probably the coolest camera I've ever shot with. It's so fast, it's so light. It's and using also using the 21 millimeter adapter. It's it's made photography quite fun for me again. I, I do think that photography is most fun when you're when you make it a little bit more difficult for yourself. So for example, shooting 21 millimeter is really difficult. So okay, this is a tip. Look at your photos in reverse chronological order, which means look at the most recent photo that you shot and just go backwards. One of the benefits of doing this is that it's just going to help speed up your process. So simple ways that you could navigate it by holding shift and pressing tab. You collapse all the side windows. And if you hit the button L twice, you turn off the lights. So I feel this is a good way to look through your photos and just you could just press the, the the left arrow key and whenever you like a photo you just press P on the keyboard. And at this point I'm a lot more liberal at choosing my images so I don't think about it too much I just kind of go through my photos pretty quickly and whenever I see a photo that causes my knee to jerk a little bit which I just kind of like the angle or perspective or the way it makes me feel I just press P and at this point there's not really an obvious logic to whatever. So the series of images I shot this guy. None of them really stick out to me. So I just keep going through my pictures. I like I was, I was shooting this scene and I don't know where this dude just kind of ran into the frame. And you can see this process. Uh, the, one of the downsides is that looking through all the photos one by one like this could be pretty slow. So another strategy is to press G to go back to gallery view and actually to look at your photos as small thumbnails. And you could adjust the sizes of the thumbnails if you want to expedite how quickly you look at your, through your photos. I do find that looking at your photos, three photos across is kind of a ideal thing. So what I could do instead is I could click on the Im images individually and then press P whenever I see a picture that I that I like. It's kind of crazy. A hundred was a hundred thirty nine billion emails sent today. Oh my god, it's a lot of internet users. So. Just kind of going through your images this way is actually a much faster way to go through the photos. And also the benefit of looking at your photos as small thumbnails, you could just very, very quickly 
judge your compositions without having to look through the photos one by one. So I kind of like this. Here, here you have like this X composition, which is, I think it's a better composition than the other ones. And let's see. Like that one. Kind of like that one. And it's uh and this is the thing too is that I think a lot of people are they're a lot of photographers are afraid that like oh what if I have a good photo but I just kind of missed out on it, and I think it's I think that's all right it's all part of the part of the game if you're too afraid of missing out a potentially good photo, I think that kind of mentality is going to prevent you from uh, shooting new photos that you actually do find a little bit more innovative and uh, interesting. So all these photos are actually at USC campus. Really, really nice architecture here. And this is also another photo tip is don't constrain yourself within a genre of photography. Allow yourself free reign any form of photography. And even at this point, I used, I used to be a lot more stickler about choosing my images or picking them. I'm just so much more liberal about it now because for me, I'm probably more interested in just creative productivity and to enjoy it rather than striving to make that one perfect photo. And this has actually helped me get a huge new second wind in photography, which is, which I think should be the goal, right? And also there's a tip, when you're composing, just look at the edges of the frame. This is kind of nice, this is kind of nice here. So scroll in, scroll in, scroll in. Even photos, I like to shoot up photos of plants. Some sort of stuff in the sky, selfies of myself walking, press G, and the more you use the keyboard to just kind of, and sometimes if you just want to look at the photo a little bit closer, just click it, kind of like this girl walking on the frame, and you know if you like a photo, if it, it captures you when you're looking at it. Kind of big screen. This is also another tip too is that don't just when you're shooting photos, don't just stop. Keep walking and clicking. It's got no wheelchair. Crossing the street in LA. Kind of an interesting image. You see just shoot a lot. I kind of like this Felix the Cat, like post apocalyptic view of LA. Hmm. And at this point, my suggestion is when you're looking through images, try not to over intellectualize it, just kind of follow your gut. If you just look, at, if you like to, if you look at the photo, and you just kind of like the way it looks. Even a photo like this, I kind of like this, the shape here, a little bit of the foliage here, a little bit of dirt there. Kind of like this photo I shot of Cindy. I shot with a 21 millimeter lens, super low angle. So all these nice leading lines to her head, which are actually, which is actually quite interesting. Kind of like this foliage here. So you can see Cindy's obviously in my muse, so I like to photograph a lot. So this is kind of interesting. So as Cindy, and I think she was doing a hand gesture, but her, the hand looks kind of curved and weird here, which I kind of like. And hats are great too, because they make much more interesting backgrounds. So I also kind of like the mood of this image. You can see a little bit of Cindy's silhouette, a little bit of the gradient here. And generally, I think with the compositions, the more simple and the minimal, the 
generally the better. I also like this one, Cindy's face silhouette, hand, head down. It's got a great mood. So a lot of it is too, is just like follow your emotions, your emotional gut and your soul. This sometimes shapes here. Palm trees, kind of like that. Photographing. Your hand twisting, kind of a fun little body shapes twisted are a little more fun. Fists are interesting. Photograph your arm and watch. It's a tip I got from my best friend, uh, Joseph Kudelka. Photographing simple backgrounds. Like this fist notion. I think I got it from a picture I saw from like Muhammad Ali or something. Kind of fun. I like the mystery here. In the second, Cindy takes off her hat. That's a good moment. I like the silhouette Cindy all the way on the right side of the frame. It's called a bookend. These leading lines here, Cindy silhouette, it's very interesting too. Kind of even like these like simple reflection shots. Oh, so these photos are actually super fun. Is as I was walking down, just looking straight up, I just love how wide it is. It just kind of sucks you into this urban jungle. Kind of like that. Yeah, it does seem that like one of the things I learned is the wider your lens. Not always, but generally the more interesting the photos because it, it just kind of puts you there. It makes you feel like you're really there. So if you have the chance to shoot with a 21 millimeter lens, I would highly recommend it. Kind of like that grid there. It just kind of looks like an eye with those gritty walls. I love that. There's one like tetra shape in the air. I also like this. The marks on the wall, the foliage here. Even shooting your camera a little tilted is fun. Oh, well, I shot quite a lot of photos. It's kind of interesting. Whoa, got a plane here. Felix, Cindy Silhouette, the marks here. Kind of like her hair here too. I don't like that though. Hmm, kind of like the mood here. Kind of like that. Hmm. Not like that silhouette in his head. Very cool. Yeah, shoot these urban landscapes, they're, they're good fun. Man, photography is so fun. This one I thought couldn't get any more interesting. Like this little angle accentuates all this drama here. Kind of interesting building. So sometimes you could just look at the photos like, oh, that was interesting, but you don't have to pick it. So just follow your gut. When in doubt, don't pick it. I kind of like it. So I like in this corner here, the, the trees coming out, all the foliage. Also like this, this kind of these gritty abstracts. So this is inside the Gloria Kaufman dance hall. Oh man, this building has such beautiful aesthetics. Just love all the curves. So nice, look at this. And this is also another tip too, is that make try to strive to make photos that motivate you, is that 
when you look at the photo, you just love the way it makes you feel and it, it motivates you to actually move. These photos are all pretty fun. So you can see, right, like the corner is a little flash, it's a little curve here, the curves here. Hmm, kind of like all these little spots in the top left corner. And honestly, it's kind of impossible to know what the best composition is. So the best strategy is just to shoot a lot and then figure it out later. I kind of like that the, the triangle here, the curve here, the dot, the dot, dot. I'm going to shot like this, right? I like the dots here, dot, 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 dot. This takes your eyes all around the frame. Like looking up. Hmm, kind of like this curves here. So it's kind of nice is that when you're shooting photos, it's kind of like dancing too, like that right there. Hmm. There's all the photos. Now we've got some more. Got some photos of Cindy's hair. Okay, I think those are all the photos. So now what I like to do is press shift and tab, the bottom right corner under filter, filters off, click flagged, and then here's all the images, and then you could make the thumbnails a little bit smaller to see all the images. The way you just do is press command A, export, and choose a folder. So usually what I do is I keep everything synced on Dropbox. So Dropbox, pictures, 2019, and then you can just make it like USC version 6, 21 millimeter Rico. Okay. Choose. And then rename to, so I have it right now, Air Kim, Black and White Photography Rico GR2. Make it a 21 millimeter lens. And the quality 80% is fine. Sharpen for a screen. And this is actually useful. Under uh, After Export, Show in Finder. So as you're exporting these images, it will pop up in your in your finder when it's it's done. So right now it's going to export it to this new folder. So you can just see it just kind of turning out one by one. One of the benefits of using uh, Dropbox, especially Dropbox, but I think I pay it like ten bucks a month, is that it keeps everything synced. I've I've used all the cloud services, Google Drive, etc., and it seems like Google Drive, uh, sorry, Dropbox works the best. And also if you're like using a phone or using your iPad, everything's synced a lot nicer. And generally what my workflow is, I just export all the photos. And then under uh, my website, my blog, my WordPress, I just go to upload. And once all these bad boys are done uploading, I'll just uh, drag it into my, my media library. And then once you look through your media library in WordPress, wordpress.org, you could just quickly see all your images. So I'm becoming more and more anti-social media, more and more for making your own website and your own blog. And it's just a much better way to catalog all your images, look through them quickly. And also when you're blogging or writing, it's so much easier to, to find them and share them and so forth. So this is uh, just gonna export. So yeah, so this is just a basic overview of my like room workflow. The big things I do to speed it up Shoot JPEG, don't agonize over choosing decisions, and also realize that the goal isn't perhaps to make a perfect photo, it's just to keep shooting. All right, thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you want to learn more tips, just go to my blog, Eric Kim blog. Just go on the Googles, click the first thing, and then just find some motivation and inspiration. All right, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Peace out.